Sure. Chip? Um, you were concerned with policy wonk in mind with the framework of um, the Freedom Caucus side coming in and dealing with this. Um, Donald's is a big communicator, Harry's a, the leader. Why were you guys not able to pull more Freedom Caucus members in support of this? What is the uphill battle? They talk about the numbers, they talk about this, but they, they walked out of that phone call very quickly discounted. Uh, my colleagues, uh, you'd have to ask them that question and get their answer to it. I mean, look, I, I'm standing here telling you I do not believe that it is a appropriate or sustainable position to say that we're not going to support legislation that would cut government 8 percent while securing our border. Again, policy matters. What we're seeing at the border matters. It is an overwhelming issue for the people across this country. So that would be my message uh, to them. And, and look, but it's not without at least some point, right, about figuring out what's next. You mentioned my colleague, Mr. Norman. I don't want to speak for him, but I think some of my colleagues uh, want to see where's this going to go? What, what happens at the end of 30 days? That's the conversation we're having right now about where things go. We've got to come together and move forward uh, spending bills that will unite the conference. My belief, as I've put forward here, without any shame whatsoever, is that a piece of legislation that will secure the southern border, reducing the size of the government for 8 percent over 30 days, and by the way, run alongside a Department of Defense bill that is a strong bill, if we were to pass it in a package as we would recommend doing, that would meaningfully ensure that our defense is funded, our troops are paid, but it would focus on the mission first instead of the social engineering going on at defense destroying morale and recruiting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. So some of the some of those that are saying that they're leaning no on the CR have also said they haven't even read the bill yet. Yesterday I spoke with Andrew Clyde, for example. Can I get your reaction to that and what do you think of people who are kind of dismissing it without really I mean you know, every member is going to take the time to look at this bill to make sure that they go through it with a fine tooth comb. That's why it's important that we continue to abide by our rules. Unlike the Democrats, we put the bills out there for members to take the time to read. And the good news is, unlike what Democrats typically pass, which are thousand dollar bills, this bill is less than 200 pages. So I know members are uh, judiciously going through the bill, and I'm optimistic that there's going to be great conversations and productive conversations. You know, when we do these press conferences, it's always at the beginning of the week, and the questions are always the same. How are you going to get this done? We're consistently underestimated. We are committed to working with our colleagues all across this conference. And it was a very productive conference. All right, last question. Yes, sir. Can you give us any idea what kind of timeline we're looking at here? You know, the speaker said we're going to continue working through this process, and if that includes staying through the weekend, we are going to do that. Uh, but as you saw, the floor schedule that's been put out by the majority leader's office, we're going to continue working through and having those productive conversations. This is about standing up on behalf of the American people, cutting spending to rein in the reckless spending we've seen under Joe Biden, and securing the border, which is an existential threat, and it's a direct result of the failed open border policies of Joe Biden. Are 